Here's example one of using double angle formulas to evaluate trig expressions. So we're given that the tangent of theta is 1 half and theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. So then what we have to figure out is sine of 2 theta, uh, cosine of 2 theta, and then the tangent of 2 theta. Okay. So uh, this is going to be a reference triangle problem. So we've done a few things like this before where we're given uh, a trig function of some angle and we're told uh, generally where the angle is. So first what we have to figure out is what quadrant is that? So if theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2, uh, that's going to be in quadrant 3. If you're not sure about that right away, um, just uh, set up a little picture. So uh, here's an angle of 0 radians. Pi over 2 radians puts you over here. Pi radians puts you here. Okay, so 0, go up here to get pi over 2, over here to get pi, and then 3 pi over 2 will be down here. Okay, And then all the way back full circle for 2 pi. So if theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2, well, here's pi. Here's 3 pi over 2, so somewhere between there uh, is going to be somewhere over here, over here. We don't really know exactly where, but all we know is between pi and 3 pi over 2. So that means somewhere in the third quadrant, and that's all we have to know, really. So theta is somewhere in the third quadrant. So uh, this right here tells us uh, theta is in quadrant 3. Okay. Theta is in quadrant 3. So uh, we're going to have to set up a little reference triangle type picture here. So we have a lot of room down here in the corner, so let's maybe use that. All right, so if theta is in quadrant 3, so let's draw our reference triangle picture here in quadrant 3. x-axis, y-axis. So we'll put the angle here. Okay, and then here's theta. Okay, so we're told that tangent of theta is 1 half. So uh, tangent, remember, is opposite over adjacent. So it is kind of goofy to talk about opposite and adjacent for this angle theta. But you can think of opposite and adjacent in terms of the reference angle here. So this right here is the reference angle uh, for the angle theta. So we can talk about opposite and adjacent in terms of that. So uh, if tangent of theta is 1 half, uh, 1 over 2, we can say opposite over adjacent. So opposite will say is 1, adjacent will say is 2. We don't have to do it like that, but it does keep things pretty simple. So anyway, uh, opposite's going to be 1, adjacent's going to be 2. So remember, we're talking about relative to the reference angle here. So opposite is 1. So maybe get a different color. Uh, opposite is 1, and adjacent is 2. Okay, now again, we have talked about this a few times in other, uh, earlier videos when we did stuff with reference angles. But uh, so, since uh, we don't really want to have to worry too much about the positivity and negativity, um, you know, okay, okay, we're in quadrant 3, so tangent is positive. Uh, cosine is negative, sine is negative, things like that. So we do want to be kind of careful about that, but we don't want to have to worry about it too much. So what we can do is say, okay, this will be negative 2, this will be negative 1. Okay, why is that? Well, if we start at the origin, then let's uh, go, let's trace around the triangle here. So if we start at the origin, we're going to go to the left in the negative x direction. So we'll call this negative 2 then, because we start at the origin, go to the left in the negative x direction. Then we have to go down in the negative y direction to get down to here. So that's uh, going to be negative 1. So go in the negative x direction, therefore we have negative 2. Then go in the negative y direction, therefore we have uh, negative 1, okay, instead of positive and positive. Now if you don't like that, if you, if you would rather keep everything positive, that's totally fine, but then you'll have to worry in the end about, okay, what's, uh, what's going to be positive, what's going to be negative, because I have to think about what quadrant I'm in. But if you put the negative signs in here now, everything's fine. It, and uh, we don't know the hypotenuse yet, but remember, hypotenuse is always positive no matter what. Okay, so before we move on, we have to get the hypotenuse. Okay, why do we have to get the hypotenuse? Well, we want to know the sine of 2 theta, the cosine of 2 theta, and the tangent of 2 theta. And remember from our formula sheets, which by the way, if you want a copy of this, check the video description, there's a link in there. Uh, you can click that link, get a copy of this. We know from a formula sheet that uh, sine of 2 theta, tangent of 2 theta, and cosine of 2 theta that all involves sine of theta and cosine of theta and tangent of theta, right? So we have to know what's the sine of theta, what's the cosine of theta. So that's why we're doing this whole thing with the reference triangle. All we're given is the tangent of theta and where theta is. So now we have to figure out the sine of theta and the cosine of theta before we can evaluate any of this stuff here. Okay. Well, we actually, we can do part C without that, but it's, you know, we might as well just go in order here and get everything we need to. Okay, so let's call this uh, hypotenuse R for some reason. All right, so then uh, if we use the Pythagorean theorem, what we're going to have is uh, negative 1 squared plus negative 2 squared 
uh, equals, let's say, r squared over here, r squared equals. Okay, so uh, hypotenuse squared equals negative 1 squared plus negative 2 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1. Uh, negative 2 squared is 4. So 1 plus 4 is 5. So what we have is r squared equals 5. So if r squared equals 5, then r equals plus or minus root 5. Okay, so take the square root of both sides. But remember, for the hypotenuse, we always take the positive root. So the hypotenuse is always going to be positive. So get rid of that negative root. So r is just the square root of 5. Okay, okay so r is the square root of 5. So uh, let's maybe label that in the same color. Okay, so this here is r, and that's uh, the square root of 5. Okay, time for some new markers, I think. All right, so uh, how's that helpful? Well, now that we have the hypotenuse and the triangle, we can get the sine and get the cosine. So uh, we see from here that the sine of theta, sine of theta is what? Well, remember, um, we're talking about uh, relative to the reference angle here, so sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is negative 1, and hypotenuse is root 5, so this is negative 1 over root 5. Okay? And then cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is negative 2, hypotenuse is root 5, so this is negative 2 over root 5. Okay, so that's what we have going on there. So yes, uh, you might be required to rationalize the denominator, but if you've been watching some of my videos from earlier, you know how I feel about that. And also, uh, we're not really, this is not the final answer we're looking for. Okay, what we have to do is figure out what's sine of 2 theta, what's cosine of 2 theta, what's tangent of 2 theta. So even if you have to rationalize the denominator, um, just save it for the final answer at the end. So if we do it here, it's going to be unnecessary extra work. Okay, so anyway, um, and I do want to point out again, if you didn't like doing this thing with the minus signs, then here, uh, you wouldn't have the minus signs here, and they do have to be here, but you would have to remember that, okay, I'm in the third quadrant, so sine and cosine both have to be negative. So if you didn't have them already labeled in the triangle, you would have to remember that, and it is pretty easy to just kind of uh, gloss over that and forget it. So that's why I do like putting the negative signs into here, so we don't have to think about it, worry about it later. Okay, so anyway, uh, no matter how you do it though, sine of theta is negative 1 over root 5, cosine of theta is negative 2 over root 5. Now we can move forward with the problem. So sine of 2 theta is, uh, that does equal, Okay, we know from our formula sheet, sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. And we see here sine of theta is negative 1 over root 5. So this is 2 times negative 1 over root 5. And then cosine of theta is negative 2 over root 5. So we have uh, negative 2 over root 5. Okay, then we can just multiply everything together. So uh, negative times a negative gives us a positive, so there's no minus signs, everything's positive, that's great, that's, that's wonderful. And then what we have really is, uh, so this 2 is like a 2 over 1, so the 2 is kind of on top here, so it's 2 times negative 1 times negative 2. So negatives cancel, we get a positive, so we just have 2 times 1 times 2, which is just 4. So on the top we have 4, and what happens on the bottom? Uh, 1 doesn't really do anything, root 5 times root 5, root 5 times root 5 is just plain old 5, so what we end up with is 4 over 5, okay? So that's all we have going on here is just 4 over 5, so sine of 2 theta is 4 over 5, okay? And that's the answer for part A, 4 over 5, all right? So part B, cosine of 2 theta, so uh, really the hard part's pretty much over, the hard part was just this whole reference triangle thing here, we don't have to do it, we only have to do it once, because we just have to do it once to get the value of sine of theta and cosine of theta, and then once we have those, we just basically we're just plugging numbers into formulas uh, and simplifying with arithmetic. Okay, so cosine of 2 theta. We see that there are actually three different ones we could use here. So let's maybe use that first one because it'll probably be the easiest one to simplify. Because cosine of theta and sine of theta, they're both something over root 5. So if we square and subtract, we're already going to have a common denominator. Okay, if we use any of these, or either of these other two, then we'll have to worry about getting a common denominator, which isn't really going to be that bad or that difficult in this case, but it is just a tiny bit of extra work. So. But of course, if you don't want to use the first one, I mean, really, you could use uh, any of these three, and either, uh, any of them will work totally fine. Okay. So, but let's do uh, cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. And remember, that's just shorthand notation for cosine of theta whole thing squared minus sine of theta, oops, minus uh, sine of theta, 
whole thing squared. Okay. So let's zoom into this a little bit. Okay, so then what we have going on is uh, cosine of theta we know is negative 2 over root 5. So this is going to be negative 2 over root 5, whole thing squared, and then minus negative uh, 1 over root 5, whole thing squared. Okay, so let's uh, come up here. So then this equals, uh, if we take negative 2 over root 5 and square it, uh, this, you, know, you can think of that as squaring the top and the bottom separately. So remember, if you have uh, m over n squared, that's the same thing as m squared over n squared, okay? uh, even if you have square roots and things like that in there. Okay, so if we square the top and the bottom separately, what's going to happen? Uh, negative 2, that's, if we square that, we're going to get 4. Root 5, if we square that, we're just going to get plain old 5. And then we solve a minus sign here. Uh, so this minus sign comes from this minus sign right here. And then negative 1, if we square it, we get a positive 1. Root 5, if we square that, we get a 5. So this is 4 over 5 minus 1 over 5, which is 3 over 5. And that's our answer for part B, 3 over 5. Okay. So 4 fifths for part A, which we'll put a box around. And then for part B, the answer was 3 over 5. 3 over 5. That's part B. Okay, so we'll zoom back out. And then next is uh, part C, tangent of 2 theta. So there's actually a couple different ways we can do this. Uh, one is by using this formula here. We'll do it both ways just to illustrate the point. Uh, tangent of 2 theta is 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared of theta. So let's do it that way first. So tangent of 2 theta is 2 tan theta over 1 minus tangent squared of theta. Okay. And uh, we're given tangent of theta is 1 half. Okay, we're given that. So we didn't really even need the reference triangle to do part C. But this is going to be 2 times the tangent of theta, which is 2 times 1 half. And then uh, over 1 minus, remember, tangent squared of theta, that's just short notation for tangent of theta whole thing squared. So uh, since tangent of theta is 1 half, then tan squared of theta is 1 half squared. Okay. So then what we end up with is uh, 2 times a half is 1. So we have a 1 on top. On the bottom, we have 1 minus uh, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Okay. So uh, let's zoom into this here. So what we can do is say, OK, uh, 1, if we want to get a common denominator, we can multiply this by 4 over 4. So 1 is the same thing as 4 over 4. So that's 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4, which is going to give us 1 over uh, 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4 is 3 over 4. So 1 divided by 3 over 4, uh, that's the same thing as 1 times the reciprocal, which is 1 times 4 thirds. And 1 times 4 thirds is just 4 thirds. Okay. And that's our answer for part C, 4 thirds. Okay, so that's one way to do part C. The other way to do part C may be a little bit simpler, actually. Uh, remember, tangent is sine divided by cosine, right? So tangent of 2 theta, let's come over here where there's a little bit of room left. Um, we'll get rid of this too. Tangent of 2 theta is uh, the sine of 2 theta divided by the cosine of 2 theta. Well, we know what these things are. We just found them in part A and part B. Sine of 2 theta is 4 over 5. Okay, here's sine of 2 theta. It's 4 over 5. So this uh, is 4 over 5. And then divided by the cosine of 2 theta, which we found out in part B, cosine of 2 theta is 3 over 5. So that's 4 over 5 divided by 3 over 5. Okay. So uh, dividing by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to be 4 over 5 times the reciprocal of 3 fifths, which is uh, 5 thirds, times 5 over 3. So 4 over 5 times 5 over 3, fives cancel, and we end up with 4 thirds, which is the exact same answer we had from doing it uh, using the formula. Okay, so the point there is two different ways to evaluate that tangent. You can use the formula or use the fact that tangent is sine over cosine. And maybe using sine over cosine might have been a little bit easier because you don't have this comp uh, complex fraction here, no worrying about getting a common denominator or anything like that. But either way works. Uh, Whichever one you want to use is totally fine. Okay, so anyway, oh, and notice also here the square roots kind of uh, canceled on their own, so we didn't have to worry about uh, rationalizing the denominator. If we did rationalize the denominator at this step, uh, we would still get the right answer, but we'd have an extra step in here of simplifying. Okay, so uh, that's why it's really not always the best thing to just rationalize the denominator at every step and every time you see one. But anyway, just something to point out there. So that's uh, example one of using double angle formulas to evaluate trig expressions.